Well, we previously drew a piece of a parabola by running a line um, the, at the ends of a line along two given lines. And so we'll see how, how that goes there. And we took the curve that is tangent to that family of lines, the, the envelope. Now we also saw that given two points on a parabola, um, we can cons construct, um, we can draw that parabola by um, joining the tangents at those points um, and doing the same construction um, on that V shape for the two tangents from from the point of tangency to their intersection. So the question I have is, can we work out what V-shaped structure, not a dis disconnected structure like this, what V-shaped pair of lines um, would give us that same piece of parabola? Well, if we run T down to zero, we'll see that at the at the zero point at the left hand side of the parabola, this is the tangent line, the line that joins A and E. And if we run T the opposite way, we can see that that's the tangent line there. So the 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 two ends of this um, um so the two extreme points uh, here are going to lie here. And here, so those are the tangents at the extremities of that curve. So these, this um, would be um, the lines would be lying somewhere in there. The two lines we're going to use to construct this piece of uh, parabola. Um, a key point being um, this uh, intersection of those two tangents. So I'm now going to hide away these these tangents. we have the intersection point. What we want is the end point of this curve. Now, given a curve, we can put um, a point on it and we need to, we want to prescribe its parametric location. Well, when t was equal to zero, this point was lying at, this point should lie at the end. And so just a zero value there is gonna give us the end of the curve. Um, Similarly, a one value, because our parameter was running from zero to one here, as you see, t goes from zero to one. So simply a one value will put us on the other end of the curve. So that's very nice. Now, what we would like to do then is to um, use this as our um, as a little construction, um, and we can see as a, as as the framework that we're going to build our our, our construction on. Um, let me just put a line across here, and we'll stick it at parametric location t on these lines. And put this one at parametric location t on this line. Oh. And we can see that as T moves, um, that line moves with it. And so it is uh, enveloping the same curve. Now, if we wanted to be able to come up with GHI given uh, A, B, C, and D, um, could we do that geometrically? Um, I relied on the GX web's uh, uh, grabbing of these endpoints. What, what would be interesting to know is how far along the line from A, which is given to G, which can be easily derived from, from the driven. Uh, quantity, how far along that line is H. So that would allow us to find where H is. Um, and let's have a look at that, that, that question. I'll hide away some of my uh, um, 
pieces of the drawing that I don't need anymore. And hide these things. And if I can grab it, I'll hide that one too. Okay, so what I'd like to know is how far along the line from A to G, both of which are easily drivable, um, is this point H. And uh, however, I have not actually specified anything about the given points. They're not really given, they're just sort of sitting there. So let me give them uh, some locations. Out. Put one of them in the origin. I always like to do that. You might as well slide uh, the drawing so that the origin is, is a decent place. And the other ones are wave X, not Y, not X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. So now what I'd like to know is how far along this line from A to G is H. So what I can do is uh, let's get the A in there. Look at the distance of A to G over the distance. Um, so that's not, not what I wanted at all. Let me get what I wanted. This is from A to H. And I need to be outside the parenthesis before I put my divide, divided by the distance from A to G. Now, that's quite straightforward. And if you look at that, you can see that that the, the numerator is the cross product of the vector from B to, so it's X1, Y1, the vector from B to C with the vector from B to A. But that, that cross product is the area of uh, rhombus uh, circle squared by AB and C. Then if you look at the denominator, um, this is just the cross product of the vector from B to A with the vector from B to D. So the denominator um, is the area of the uh, rhombus circumscribed by ABD. So the ratios of these two things are, are, are just the ratios of the areas of those respective triangles. And both triangles rest on the base AB. So therefore, it's just the ratio of the uh, altitudes. Let me just uh, check that out. We're going to go area um, of A of the triangle ABC uh, divided by area of ABD. And we can see, yes, indeed, those are the same. And so therefore, um, distance from C to AB, which is the altitude of that triangle, over the distance from D to AB, Um, again, uh, is the same quantity. So the, the distance of H along the line from A to G is just the area of um, ABC over ABD. And so you can see that if C actually lies on the line, um, then um, these, these points, the, the distance always going to be zero. Um, and we can we can make that happen, I guess, by let's have a look at X not and Y not make them unlock those things. X and Y not. No, I actually wanted X1, Y1 and unlock those ones. So we can pull G, let's pull C, and we can see that if we pull C all the way over, of course, um, they're going to be uh, zero of the proportional way uh, along. Um, along the line. So this, this gives us a way of going from a 
particular pair of discontinuous, unconnected lines to a pair of connected lines that draws the same figure. Um, what I'm going to look at next is um, how about if we start with the V shape? What's the complete universe of connected lines? What other connected lines, unconnected lines, would give us the same figure? Okay, there's clearly one pair of connected lines that will give us that figure. How about uh, can we get the total family of unconnected lines? 